Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel on Feynman Integration. Today I'm going to be reevaluating the Gaussian integral for two reasons. Um, the first reason is that I've been featuring it um, a lot on this channel. The result of it, I've been, I've been featuring the result of the Gaussian integral a lot on the channel. Um, so I figured I'd, I'd redo it. Um, and the second reason is that this way of, of doing it is a little bit different than the way I did it in the uh, in my first video. They both use Feynman integration. Um, the, the method I used before came from a, uh, a paper by Keith Conrad of the, um, of the University of Connecticut. And this one is by a fellow named uh, Leo Goldmarker, and it's spelled L-E-O. G-O-L-D-M-A-K-H-E-R. And it's a paper titled, appropriately, Differentiation Under the Integral Sign. All right. And this is, this is really clever. I did not come up with this myself, but I really like it. And it uses, uh, the fi it uses Feynman integration, so I'm going to feature it on this channel. So I'm going to create a function of t. And this is modified slightly from his version. Um, and it's going to be equal to t times the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative t squared x squared over x squared plus 1 dx. And then we will notice that um, if we take the limit as t approaches 0 of f of t over t, we'll get pi over 2. Because if you take our f of t, which is this thing, divide it by t, that would cancel that t, take the limit as this t approaches 0, you'd get the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 over x squared plus 1 dx, which is pi over 2. Um, okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is, uh, um, let's see, Squared. Let's put a parenthesis around that x squared um, and add a 1. Okay, so what did that have the effect of doing? That had the effect of multiplying this, enti this entire side of the equation by e to the negative t squared. So to compensate for that, we need to multiply this side by e to the negative t squared. All right. I hope you can all see why that's true, because um, with respect to x, e to the negative t squared is constant. It comes right out of the integral. Um, so, yeah, that just had the effect of multiplying this side by e to the negative t squared. So we compensate it, compensate for that by multiplying this side by e to the negative t squared. All right, next, the next step is to multi or divide both sides by t. So now we have t to the negative 1, f of t, e to the negative t squared, I don't know why I put it in that order, I just did, we'll go with it, is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative t squared times x squared plus 1 over x squared plus 1 dx. You guys with me so far? Good. All right, next step, we're going to take a derivative uh, with respect to t on both sides of the equation. So what do we have? This will give us, um, I'm not actually, I'm just going to be expressing this derivative with respect to t as the derivative with respect to t of the thing. So I'm just going to literally write it out as ddt. Um, we'll make it cleaner this time. Let's say, call this... Uh, t to the negative 1, e to the negative t squared, f of t. Put it in the uh, appropriate order there. All right, now it's going to be equal to the derivative with respect to t of this thing. And we can use the Leibniz rule for differentiation with the integral sign to accomplish that. That's going to give us, let's see, um, negative uh, 2t. That comes from the derivative with respect to t of this. And then we'll have the integral from 0 to infinity of, let's see here, um, e 
to be mm, negative t squared times x squared plus 1. Um, and that's it, dx, because um, we'll also recover a factor of x squared plus 1 in the differentiation with respect to t of that thing, which will cancel with this. So that's just dx. All right. Um, okay. Um, now we can... Um, we can take this e to the negative t squared outside the integral, because this is just e to the negative t squared x squared times e to the negative t squared. Um, and since we're integrating with respect to x, that e to the negative t squared is constant. So we'll bring it out. All right, so we'll just continue this equality up here. So this is equal to this is equal to this. We're gonna have negative two t e to the negative t squared integral uh, 0 to infinity of e to the negative t squared x squared dx. And now we will make the substitution that u is equal to tx, therefore du is equal to t dx. All right, so this is now going to be equal to um, let's see uh, negative 2 t e to the negative t squared integral well let's see um, the bounds won't change 0 to infinity and then we'll have e to the negative u squared and our dx is uh, du divided by t, so that will cancel this t. Um, and then we're left with du. And we'll notice that this thing is exactly i, so we'll just put that in there as a 2i. There we go. So we have this is equal to this is equal to this is equal to this. So I'm just going to uh, rewrite this as uh, d dt. Actually, I better write it over to the left or over to the right a little bit here. So I'm going to need to add some other stuff. So we have d dt um, t to the negative one e to the negative t squared f of t. Uh, and that's going to be equal to negative 2i times e to the negative t squared. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to integrate both sides of this equation with respect to t with the bounds 0 to infinity. In other words, we're going to do this. We're going to take this and integrate it from 0 to infinity dt and do the exact same thing there should be a little parentheses there. And do the exact same thing on the other side. And you notice we don't have, we can bring this negative 2i uh, right outside the integration because it is a constant. And we'll put dt from 0 to infinity. And of course, this integral 0 to infinity of e to the negative t squared dt is just i. Um, so this will become negative 2i squared. Okay, so now what do we have? Um, let's see. We're going to have, well, since this is already the derivative of some function, what we'll do is we'll just, we'll, we'll evaluate this definite integral the normal way, which is to say we're going to anti-differentiate it and then evaluate it at the bounds. So the anti uh, the antiderivative with respect to t of the derivative with respect to t of this function right here is just going to be the function itself. So we're going to have uh, t to the negative 1 e to the negative t squared. Um, and then we will rewrite our f of t um, in this form right here, which is t times this thing. 
In other words, this t and this t will cancel. Or this t and this t to the negative 1 will cancel, leaving us nothing but t e to the negative t squared times the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative t squared. And don't forget, our, um, our original f of t did not include this um, this x squared plus 1. It was simply e to the negative t squared x squared, if you recall. If you don't recall that, rewind the video, and you'll see that um, this plus 1 was added and then compensated for by multiplying the other side by e to the negative t squared. So, like I said, originally our function was this. So, anyway, where was I? We were evaluating this thing from 0 to infinity, and this thing is e to the negative t squared times our f of t, which is t, which will cancel with this t to the negative 1. So we just have e to the negative t squared times the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative t squared x squared over x squared plus 1 dx, but this whole thing, don't forget, this is being evaluated from 0 to infinity, um, more uh, accurately from t equals infinity to t equals 0, and that's equal to negative 2 pi squared. All right, I don't believe we need this anymore. So, let's go ahead and evaluate this at the bounds. Pretty clear to see that if you plug infinity in for t, you're going to get 0. So we only need to worry about this evaluation. We only need to worry about the point t equals 0. And we're actually taking a limit, don't forget. Um, and in this case, I don't believe it would matter that we're taking a limit. We could actually evaluate it at the point 0. But anyway, we're going to get the negative of this thing evaluated at zero. So we're going to have negative, uh, let's see, this would be e to the negative zero, which would just be one, so we won't even worry about it. And we'd still have the integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative infinity, which is just zero, I'm, I'm sorry, e to the negative zero, which is just one. Um, so we'll have one, over x squared plus 1 dx, and that will be equal to negative 2 i squared. Let's go ahead and get rid of these negative signs. All right, this is pi over 2, so we have pi over 2 being equal to 2 i squared. Of course, dividing both sides by 2, we'll get pi over 4 is equal to i squared. And taking a square root on both sides, we get that i is equal to the square root of pi over 4. Or, this is how I usually write it, which is the square root of pi over 2. There you go. Alright guys, that's my uh, second video on evaluating the Gaussian integral using Feynman integration. Hope you enjoyed that.